Hi, welcome to a robotics tutorial by Robojax. My name is Ahmed Shamshiri, presenting this tutorial from Canada. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can program a smart car, in this case, a Lego smart robot car, to avoid obstacle. First, we're going to use this ultrasonic sensor, HTSR04. Using this, we are able to measure the distance between this point and an obstacle wall or whatever comes in front of the vehicle. When the robot car approaches an obstacle within certain specific distance, it will stop. Also, I'm gonna show you how to program this robot so it follows the obstacle in a straight path. If the obstacle goes uh, further away, the robot keeps the distance. When the obstacle gets closer to the robot, it also keeps the distance and robots drive backward. You can get the code for this by clicking at the link below the video in the description, which will take you to robojax.com slash learn slash Arduino. Let's get started with this. This is part four of the series to program smart robot car. In, in the first part, I did the unboxing of the Elego smart robot car kit version three and explained and showed you all the components that were inside the box. Second part, I did the assembly step by step so you know if you get the kit, how to proceed with assembling it. In part three, I showed you how to control the smart car to go forward, to go backwards, turn right and turn left. In this part, we are going to program the smart robot so it uh, avoids the obstacle within a specific distance that you set in the program. And after that, I'm, we're going to test it so it can follow the robot either backward or for forward in a straight line. Keep in mind that this is just a straight line. Uh, the other advanced feature will come in the upcoming videos. This is a preview of upcoming video where we program the robot. When it reaches a specific distance to the obstacle, it will stop and the servo motor will turn the ultrasonic sensor to the right, measure the distance and also turns it to the left of the robot and measures the distance and whichever side is greater or more space, it will turn in that direction and will proceed. Make sure to subscribe so you get updates when the video is uploaded. I will reply and respond to all my subscribers questions and comments so make sure to subscribe to my channel. We're going to use this HCSR04 to measure the distance. At the moment it is mounted on this servo. We are not using it in this video so it, it will be just straight and one of the, trans the transmitter will send ultrasonic signals that our ear cannot hear. It's around 40 kilohertz and when it hits the object comes back because we know the speed of sound which is around 340 meters per second the uh, time that it takes to hit the object and comes back from the time we can find out the distance between this point and the obstacle to program the robot to stop when it, it when it reaches a certain distance for example within 20 centimeters of an object And to start with ultrasonic sensor, uh, you have to download the new ping library. Usually it is included with your Arduino ID. If not, I will provide you the zip file. First, you will download the zip library somewhere in your computer. For example, my document or download, save it. And then open the Arduino ID, this program, and click on sketch, Incl include library, and then add the zip library after that point it to where you have saved it. For example, if it was inside the download, click on this icon, this PC, downloads, and then point it to the file that you have downloaded. For example, if this was your zip, select it and click open. Then close Arduino IDE, and if you have multiple instances, at the bottom you see, close them all and then reopen it. Once you reopen it, click on file, examples, and scroll down until you see new ping here at the bottom and then new ping example start the code starts from here it says include and then inside there's a uh, bracket it says new ping dot h that is a part of the library 
so we have to include it and then we have to define the trigger pen and echo pen echo pen is a4 and if you open the example that comes with the CD you will see here echo is a4 trigger is a5 it is already connected the trigger pen is a5 and this is the maximum distance that you're working with if you're expecting that you work always in 100 centimeter just make it 100 centimeter and then after that we are creating an instance of this object and we call it sonar and we pass these three values one value and then comma that's called passing we are passing it to the constructor which goes to creating this object that will initialize the uh, sensor and inside the setup we have one line which are initializing the serial monitor using serial.begin with 115,200 bits. If you click on tools, serial monitor, you must set it to 115,200. The value is here on the right side at the lower case, lower section. If you have, for example, 9600 baud, you will not be able to see and you will see something like this. So make sure it's 115,200 or whatever value that you have. And inside the loop, we have a delay of 50 millisecond the loop will continuously give delay of 50 millisecond this prints ping the value that you see is this text it prints this ping here and then sonar dot ping underscore cm and open close parenthesis this is giving the value that you see here 34 centimeter or something uh, it's fluctuating because things are changing and here and then after that we are printing this text centimeter now if i rotate this and point it to somewhere else it's above 100 centimeter and it returns zero so we have to make sure that this works for example if i put this at 200 uh, centimeter and upload it and here now it measures 160 centimeter and if i bring my hand it goes smaller And here is a demonstration currently when I put my hand here you see we are reading here 15 or 14 centimeters this is 37 and this is 10 further and if I put it towards the wall it is now measuring 150 centimeters so this measures the distance and we are using this to avoid obstacle Let me now explain the code. This is exactly the same as before with a little modification. The new ping is for ultrasonic sensor. These are the pins that have been defined before and we cannot change it. And this is the maximum distance that you're going to work. And I've set it to 200. You can set it less than that. And the distance to avoid 20 centimeter. So the smart robot car will stop at 20 centimeter. And these are the variables that have been already defined. They're, these are holding the distances. And this is creating uh, an instance of the new ping class. And we call it sonar. And we pass these values. These are exactly the same servos. Uh, will be not used, but I've left it there. These pins are exactly the same, which I have explained in a previous video. And then the car speed is 100. And this function I've been explained before, forward, back, stop. I'm not going through that. Inside the setup is exactly the same as before. And here we have put stop. So immediately when the program loads, the car will be stopped. And here is what we are doing. In the loop, the first thing that we do is, that this is a function that I've written, I've explained it before, it's called get distance so that this get, get distance is a function that measures the distance so let me explain it in here when we call the function it returns a value of type integer and we use sonar.peng centimeter this gets the distance and stores it in centimeter and because ultrasonic sensor when the distance is out of the bound over 200 centimeter it returns zero so we have to fix it here we say if if we get 
zero, then return the maximum distance, which is three, uh, 200. So we never get zero because practically I've seen it that if you bring your hand closer or an obstacle closer to ultrasonic sensor, I've seen it if you bring the obs uh, an obstacle very close to this, like zero, you never get zero. It can measure up to four or five centimeter, when it, when, but when you get closer, it gives uh, incorrect value, but never zero. For that reason, because we never get zero, we say if it is zero, this is error or out of the bound. So we return 200 and this re resolves a lot of issues that we face with this. Otherwise, return D, which is whatever value. It has some kind of number other than zero, it will return it. So this function is fixing that for us. When this returns the value, we will store it in this variable called middle distance or forward distance that is at the middle and these three lines are printing the value on the serial monitor and here we check if the middle distance is equal or smaller than distance to avoid which we define 20 centimeter then we apply break by calling this function stop and i have explained it in a second in a third video so this will stop and we wait for two seconds if distance is not less than this, which means it's more than 20 centimeters, then else go forward. And the loop will continue even if it is stopped or goes forward. Again, it will check. Check, stop. If this is false, forward. Continuously going until it faces an obstacle and will stop. more than 20 centimeter away from that box which is an obstacle and I'm going to turn this on when it goes forward at 20 centimeter the robot will send a command to stop the brake command and it will stop but it takes a little extra time before it stops so it will stop but not at 20 centimeter maybe at 15 or less than or a little more before reaching the obstacle and then I'm going to move it uh, backwards so you will see that this will follow it let me turn the robot on now so now it stopped let me this is about 15 centimeters or so So as you can see, it's responding very well. So this is the first step that we understand the obstacle avoidance. We will go to the complex levels later. This code is for the portion where the robot approaches to the obstacle stops. When the obstacle gets closer to the robot, the car will back up. And if you go back forward, the obstacle gets away. It follows it in a straight path. This portion is exactly the same as before. All the values and the only thing we have here is of after this distance to avoid, we have distance go back. So we know at what value when the obstacle gets closer we should go back then all the functions are exactly the same forward back stop set up but inside the loop here is how we proceed we check the distance and we store the distance in a variable called middle distance this is exactly the same as before we have 100 millisecond delay and the most important part is this we check here this is our car with the two wheels from this position and an obstacle it as is at 20 centimeter so oh, in this case we want to see if the distance is when the when, when it is more than 10 centimeter and less than 20 it has to stop but it says if middle distance is smaller than avoid distance which means if it is smaller than 20 centimeter and middle distance this is a distance this means and the two ampersand it means this must be true and this must be true so this and is checking if middle distance is greater than distance go back this is the distance go back 
so 10 centimeter if it is greater than this and smaller than this then we apply stop wait for one second and here we check again if the middle distance is smaller than go back and here if the distance is smaller than this go back this 10 is go back if it's smaller than this bring the obstacle closer so this is let's say if this was 10 centimeter and you bring it closer then the robot has to react and here if that is the case then we say back the back function will affect and will move the uh, robot backwards else go forward and the loop will continuously take this action Now this is the next experiment where this small robot car is uh, placed around 30 centimeters away from the obstacle and when I turn it on it will go and proceed when it reaches around 20 centimeters to the obstacle will stop. Now after that if I move this obstacle away it will follow it if I bring it closer the robot will go back backwards. So let's try it I will try to put this back and I push it So it perfectly responds. Uh, there is a hundred millisecond delay that uh, loop needs to measure the distance. And it works perfectly like that. Thank you for watching. This was how to avoid obstacle and stop or go backward with a smart robot car using a Lego smart car. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, post it in the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. If you want to get updates of my upcoming videos, you may subscribe now.